Okay, so drums. So I start typically with a kick. Um, the reason I do that is it's the backbone of the drums. It's a real focal point of low end and it's the kick's got to fit the vibe. So I'll always work in MIDI for repeating elements as a rule. Um, gives you so much more control and uh, especially with like kicks and snares because you can shape them so much better in MIDI whilst the loop's playing. So started with uh, one of my uh, kicks, which is in the pack. It's called Lush Room 3. It's an, a variation of Lush Room 1. <laughs> and it's a kick that I've used in many tunes. It's got that organic feel to it, and it has quite a lot of low-end body um, but what I did with this one is gave the kick a little bit of support with another one of mine, just underneath it. It's very subtle, but it just added a bit of low end punch and weight to that. And then what I've done here is controlled some of the range. And given it a bit of extra oomph with the exciter by pushing up the, the tops and mids um, with that. It just gives it a little bit extra punch through the mix. I did that retrospectively. Uh, once I started blending it into the actual tune because because uh, it needs needs to pop through a bit better in the mix. And then the, these little cuts can be really effective at making a kick more um, prominent because you get two effects by cutting. You remove excess fat from the low end and um, you also get this strange boosting effect when you've got a curve. Um, around the curve area, it tends to boost. So you get both a fo focusing and a trimming of the kick, and that can make it sit into the mix better. So um, did that. And then... Next thing I did was bring in one of my breaks, and that I made by slamming if I recall, three different breaks together. And I'll do this to make breaks. I'll get jungle breaks, sample pack breaks, chop them up, uh, layer them with hits, and um, and create a new break. Do that as a, as a process. And when I'm making my sample packs, as well as just for my own library. And... It's a great break. It's got lots of groove to it. And in, in particular, for this one, I've taken a lot of the low end and the mid range out. In fact, the, the break's really processed already. And um, it's just got a nice kind of shakery vibe to it. It's, you know, more shaker focused than mid range and punch. So it's perfect for. Um, putting into into tunes and, and giving it flow immediately. Um, so side chained it quite heavily uh, when the snare is actually playing that dips out that area and that makes more sense as we go into the uh, layers. So next thing I added was some hats essentially so just grabbed a hat out from my library uh villain hat nice and tight um 
sample took the fade out so it's just had a bit of like stereo weirdness around there so i took that out and gave a bit a bit more control bit of um timeless on top again back to my point about delay it's incredibly useful for creating groove um, if you stick it on um, repeating percussive elements and you can add groove by just changing that timing um, so we'll do that now in fact Just gives it different types of groove, basically. And what I did is automate the wet level so I can control how much of that delay signal is coming through. So on the intro, um, I you can hear that dun, da, dun, dun, da, dun, da, dun. Just get, makes it more interesting. And you can control the tonality of the output of the signal. So it just gives it the groove that you want and makes it feel natural. Uh, did a little dip, <laughs> tiny little thing, just to control some of that harshness there. Uh, nothing too drastic. And reverb. And also, I sent it to a send. We'll talk about that send later. But it's just essentially... Uh, a fizzing, noisy rack <laughs> that I use for bass. I ended up sending this to it. Um, so hang on. Just gives it extra vibe and an atmosphere. And it's great on bass, that rack. We'll, we'll explain it a little bit more later. Uh, what else? So that was the first driver hat. Then I added some more. I think that's an open hat from a lensman loop. Just like the open hat on it, really. That was the main thing I liked. So chuck that in there. And then combine it with the brake. Really all makes sense when you've got a solid jungle break or process break behind everything this is absolutely crucial i think a lot of people want to know you know how to get grooving into drums and my experience has always been process breaks you know like layer up breaks chop them up um eq them put a like in fact on this one i actually used a tremolo uh which i love using on bass and mid-range stuff but i put a tremolo on it and um it gives it that kind of like shakery quality. Just a real nice like, in, it's kind of in your face because of that. The tremolo is great at accentuating, um, pushing sounds forward in the mix through that kind of um, shakery, uh, the amplitude modulation essentially. It really kind of highlights stuff. So um, I recommend using tremolo on lots of stuff or anything really, try it, see how it sounds. Um, one sixteenth time signature is great for drum and bass. So, this little thing, some more ghosts, just little uh, little bits and pieces taken out the top end from it. Just wanted the sort of the kick. Um, the kicks to come through as a little subtle, as a little subtle uh, low end thing. And yeah, I could have the could turn up if I wanted, but it was just right in in that level. And and in terms of like making drums levels, levels timing, phase alignment. Think about all of this when you're making drums. Like it's 
you know there's so many tutorials on drums so i don't tend to focus on on that in a huge way but this is kind of what i focus on is timing tonality and uh and sample choice is absolutely crucial you know whether it's the flavor the integrity of the sample you know you got to look for to fill out the frequency spectrum well you got to look for that punch um and um if needs be transient shaping um transient shaping is really useful for just boosting um boosting or reducing like the the shape of the sound so in fact i think i've done it on this on this little loop here Yeah, just took out some of the, the attack. I learned over time that as you start to add drum layers, it, you just always have problems when you've got summing and you get transient issues. So you, it's good to get transient designers on and mediate the attack, moderate, turn it down um, on certain elements that have already got a bit of harshness or a bit of like... Um, staccato feel to them like really kind of uh <laughs> and uh yeah just kind of compress you know either use compression on the tops of your transients or shaper because it allows everything to fit in with your main hits your kick and your snare so yep do that as a rule and also compress out from the snare a lot in certain elements so i'll tie a compressor to the snare like I've done here. And that will make sense when I turn the snare on. So yeah, snare is another one of my samples, which is in the pack. Real simple stuff. I made that by layering, I think, three samples together. nice and tight took out some top end reverb makes all the difference with the snare as i said before it's a tonal shaping tool as well as a spacing tool you know space creation tool it can really change the sound of a snare so Just the sweet spot with that, and you've got a nice harmonic coming through on the tail. Cool, so now you're starting to hear the, the whole picture. And then this little shaker added in, which is so quiet. tidy little shaker um yeah i find that with shakers you gotta be careful don't add too many because it can really mess with your the balance of the drums the dynamic of everything i ended up you know i put it in does sound good but in the tunes context um it's sort of detracted a little bit from the drums once I got that like nice balance between the kick and the snare. Um, oh yeah. One more layer on the snare. Another one of my samples, which I've pitched at, pitched down to um, minus 12 semitones because it was intended to be more of a Matthew style kick, uh, snare rather, like that. And all that's doing is just adding a bit of weight underneath there. Again, levels, so important, you know, to get them right. Too much level. Completely changes the snare. So 
it's just there in the background giving it a bit of extra weight. But off, it sounds a bit lacking in weight. Just enough, just enough. Precision is key with uh, balancing drums. Um, and yeah, so that's basically the drums. You know, I kind of did, you know, say earlier uh, that, you know, I tend to just drop breaks in and, and get a feel for things. In this instance, that's actually an exception to, the, to my general process. I built these from the ground up, kick first in, within the, 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 the tune. Um, and I think I was just feeling quite inspired to work with the the driver samples. So I approached it like that rather than kind of making a load of drums prior and then lifting them in and, and seeing what fitted. I just thought instinctively, I know what will sound potentially good um, in, in here. I had, a, had an idea of the drum style and the drum tonality in my head and I went for it and it um, turned out turned out good. So... Um, So yeah, only other thing to note as well is I've not really used any of the elements from Carnelian drums wise apart from a couple elements here. So I grabbed out that little jungle break and um, layered it up with other bits of their drums like so. And that little nice, nice little uh, EQ'd um, hat riser thingy. So, boom, sorted. Now, drums are pretty much uh, as they need to be. Next, we will move on to base.